everybody, welcome to Monday Morning Manna. Today we're going to be discussing uh, the spiritual gift of prophecy. But before we begin, I'd like us to pray. By the name of Jesus, I pray that everybody watching comes to understand this gift, how it operates, how it's still a gift that's available today if you so call them to perform that gift and to operate in this gift for the body of Christ, Lord. And that it is only for the body of Christ and to bring people into the body of Christ. Not for them, not for their glory, but for your glory, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. We will be using the New King James Version of the Bible, but you could use any subtle version. Let's begin. So everybody, let's open up our Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15 through 22. That's Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15 through 22. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your midst, from your brethren. Him you shall fear. According to all you desired of the Lord your God in Horeb, in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, nor let me see this great fire any more, lest I die. And the Lord said to me, What they have spoken is good. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brethren, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And it shall be that whoever will not hear my words, which he speaks in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. And if you say in your heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, the thing does not happen or come to pass. That is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of him. The Old Testament prophets were raised up by the Lord. They were appointed by him, just like prophets are today. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. So these are people who obeyed him, who followed the whole law, who were committed and submitted to God. And they spoke the word to God's people at the time who were the Israelites. They spoke the word, they gave them warnings, instructions, and they had to follow them because they were appointed by God. And because they were appointed by God, their work was going to come to pass. Their foretelling of the future was going to come to pass, okay? And if they didn't listen, they were badly punished. And you'll, you'll see that as you read the Bible that the Israelites kept disobeying the prophets at that time, or at those times. And because of that, they got badly punished. And there was no Jesus at that time. So they had to do a lot just to get back into God's good graces. Okay? Yes, they, they repented and everything. But they had to do even more just to get back into his good graces. Because remember, they had the law that they had to follow at that time. Covenants that they had to follow at those times. Okay? So that's pretty much what an Old Testament prophet was and what Old Testament prophecy was about. It was about giving instructions to his people warnings okay tell them what's going to happen in the future and tell them what they must do okay all to fit into god's will and testament at the time let's continue so everybody let's open up our bibles to deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 9 through 14 that's deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 9 through 14 when you come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls upon the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out from before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. For these nations, which you will dispossess, listen to soothsayers and diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not appointed such for you. So psychics, mediums, clairvoyants, fortune tellers, these people are not of God. Okay, they God did not appoint them at all 
And as we see in the book of Deuteronomy, he calls what they practice an abomination. They use divination to find out your past. And they can tell you about your past, but they can't tell you your future because they do not serve our God at all. So they can't tell you anything in the future. Okay. And they, even if they don't, you know, some of them don't even realize that what they're practicing is not of God because they haven't read the Bible and they're not saved, but they say they believe. No, they really don't. Okay. They're not practicing believers if they're practicing, if they're psychics. Okay. Again, they can't tell the future. And some of them also double as witches or, um, you know, warlocks if it's a man. That's what they double as because they can be very manipulative as well. Okay. They also can practice spells just to keep you coming back to them for answers. So they're very different from prophets. Prophets are appointed by God. Okay. Even today, they're appointed and raised up by the Lord himself. All right. They use the word to give you um, a word about your future. They can receive a word of knowledge from the Lord. They can receive a word of wisdom from him as well about you in order to edify, exhort you, tell you something about your future that's going to help you. Yes, that's what today's prophets do. And that's how you tell the difference between a psychic versus a prophet or a prophetess. Huge difference. They are not the same at all. Okay. And God would not want, this is another reason why you know this gift exists. God is not going to have psychics running around on this earth and not have his own true, and I mean, true prophets and prophetesses. Okay, let's continue. So everybody, let's continue on. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. But now, brethren, if I come to you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you unless I speak to you either by revelation, by knowledge, by prophesying, or by teaching? Even things without life, whether flutes or harp, when they make a sound, unless they make a distinction in the sounds, how will it be known what is piped or played? For if the trumpet makes an uncertain sound, who will prepare for battle? So likewise, you, unless you utter by the tongue words easy to understand, how will it be known what is spoken? For you will be speaking into the air. There are, it may be, so many kinds of language in the world, and none of them is without significance. Therefore, if I do not know the meaning, of the language, I shall be a foreigner to him who speaks, and he who speaks will be a foreigner to me. Even so, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel. So let's continue on. We're going to skip down to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 26 through 33. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 26 through 33. How is it then, brethren, whenever you come together, each of you has a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let all things be done for edification. If anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be two or at the most three, each in turn, and let one interpret. But if there is no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church, and let him speak to himself and to God. Let two or three prophets speak, and let the others judge. But if anything is revealed to another who sits by, let the first keep silent. For you can all prophesy one by one, that all may learn and all may be encouraged. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. 
For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all of the churches of the saints. We're to pursue love, and we're also to pursue these gifts and use these gifts in love. Remember, the point of these gifts is to edify the body of Christ and also bring people into the body of Christ. So it's really not for us. It's really for God and his glory and his kingdom. So we have to know that we're using these gifts. And as Paul said, one of the highest gifts to aspire to is a gift of prophecy because it edifies the body of Christ. You can warn people, okay? You can um, encourage people through the gift of prophecy, okay? As opposed to tongues. Tongues is very self-edifying. I pray in tongues by myself, okay? When I'm talking to God. But that's very edifying. It does build you up and it does feel great. But it's not as good as something like prophecy, which builds people up. And you should also be doing that in a tongue that everybody understands. Now, if you're going to use tongues, you have to have an interpreter present or it must be interpreted as you're using it as what this says. Okay? But this is why he prefers a gift of prophecy. Everybody, in a way, benefits. Everybody feels edified. People feel warned. And not only that, when you do have the gift of prophecy operating in the church, two to three of you should prophesy, and then you should also have somebody judge. You know, there shouldn't be, you know, personal prophecies in, in the church or anything like that. Outside of the church, again, that's a different story. But in the church, in the church setting in particular, it needs to be two to three with also somebody judging. Same with speaking in tongues in the church, two to three, also with an interpreter present has to be interpreted in order, in order for people to understand and feel edified, okay, or feel warned or feel exhorted or feel rebuked, you know, these things have to happen because God is not a God of confusion, okay, he is a God of order, so the church has to be run in a way that is organized, you know, not somebody sing, doing psalms, doing this and doing that, and it's just a lot of noise, nobody gets edified, nobody feels renewed, nothing, so it has to be done in an orderly way. And again, Paul says that this is the highest gift. So if people tell you that this gift doesn't exist and it's not an operation, it is. And again, like I said in my last teaching, the church has not reached full maturity. I, I think that's, you know, you can really tell that it has not. And this is definitely a gift that's still needed. As long as there's psychics, we need prophets and prophetesses but it must be done in an orderly way. It must be done according to the word of God. And again, they use the word of God for their own re revelation and everything and also to edify the body of Christ, okay? So in a church setting, it must be done, okay, with three to four of you and then have somebody judge, all right, in order to build up the church. Personally, like if you're one-on-one -on -one with somebody and God gives you a word for that person and it lines up with the scripture, give them that word. Because this is a, a, a gift, it is a superior gift, okay? It edifies the person, it exhorts a person, okay? It can also bring somebody into the body of Christ, all for the Lord's glory. So this is definitely a gift that you want to aspire to. And yes, like it says here, Paul loves the gift of tongues, but the gift of prophecy is even better than the gift of tongues in terms of its benefits, okay? Let's continue. Let's turn to Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 45. That's Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 45. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. For why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greetings sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. So let's continue on. Luke chapter 1, verses 46 through 55. That's Luke chapter 1, verses 46 to 55. 
And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. And he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. So Elizabeth was Mary's cousin and she was a woman of integrity and obedience. And she called Mary the mother of the Lord. And she knew that she was the mother of the Lord when you know Mary uh, received the Holy Spirit. And John, because Elizabeth was also pregnant with John, okay, he leaped in her belly. So that was a sign for her. And her prophecy did come to pass because Mary, as we all know, was the mother of Jesus, okay? And then Mary also had the gift of prophecy. And she sang a song of praise to the Lord, talking about how every generation is gonna be blessed, talking about the Abrahamic covenant. And we now have a, a, a relationship with God through Jesus Christ as believers. We are a part of his kingdom, okay? We are his children now. As Christians so this stuff did come to pass all right and he does judge us he does judge us everything that we do and of course we can repent and at the end of the day we will be judged for everything that we did on this earth so all this did come to pass all this is true and if you notice both of them were obedient both of them praised the Lord both of them had integrity and we too have to have that if we're trying to be prophets or prophetesses Okay, you have to have those qualities. And today, most of the people who do really have those qualities, they have a sincere fear of God. Okay, like I said before, they're obedient. They have integrity. They're, they study the word of God a lot. They pray a lot because God gives them revelation and they have to also uh, seek God as to how to communicate that to people, who to communicate that to, who they're assigned to, who that word is supposed to go to. So they are with the Lord a lot. These are people who keep to themselves a lot because they're spending so much time with him in understanding his word in trying to figure out how to communicate his word. Okay, sometimes it might be a strong rebuke. Sometimes it might be an encouraging word. But remember, this is all under God's guidance. So they seek his guidance a lot. I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Next week, we're going, next week, Tuesday, that is, we are going to be discussing spiritual warfare and world affairs, affairs of the church as well. And then also the following week, we will be discussing uh, the spiritual gifts of evangelism, of evangelism and teaching. Thank you so much for joining us once again and have a blessed week.